All right, let's get right into it. We have made it to episode two of Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor, and uh, we reached over a thousand views. So I can't tell you we've made it, Razor, <laughs> but we didn't suck. Yeah, we, we didn't suck the first time. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure. Obviously, we're, we've talked about the technology side of of our lack of expertise, but but a thousand people sounds good, and and appreciate that yeah. people coming out. Yeah, we love it. Now, uh, folks, we know we appreciate the comments. Got us to number two. Yes. Got us to two. It got us to two. It got us up out of bed early on a Sunday morning. Uh, yeah, microphones aren't perfect visuals aren't perfect we understand that one of us might be strong one of us might be low we're gonna work it out give us a few episodes we'll figure this thing out quite as we said in social media we're gonna make sure this thing even freaking works you know like let's okay yeah. it's a great I, everything's a great idea at first right while you know every girlfriend i dated early on seemed awesome right <laughs> a few weeks <laughs> in they fizzled all right until i found the one all right anyways that's the all, one. Yeah. The Bruins only give up one to the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Saturday night game at the Garden, six to one victory. As thorough a game as I think we could hope for or expect. Um, whether Philly's depleted, and they are a bit, they're missing some important pieces led by Sean Couturier. Uh, so are the Bruins, though, with David Pasternak out of the lineup. But you go back a couple of games, and everybody was ready to jump ship. The way it works in pro sports fandom, much better feel after that game. Is it the end all be all razor? No, just a good step in the right direction though. Good step in the right direction. And we talked, we talked on the show a couple days ago about is that a great game, good game, and and we talked about being great result. I think last night was that great game. And again, the the opponent in the NHL is they were depleted. They were in their hotel for a few days. They took advantage, though. The Bruins got the secondary scoring. The young guys are all getting in the mix. They all got their first point or their first goal as Bruins. So I, the, go, the guys wake up this morning on their day off and feel awesome. And, and they get energized from that. Ten goals in four periods. So it was a real, as good, or as close to great result as you can have this early in a shortened season against a depleted line. You lineup. know, this is a Bruins show. Obviously, hence the name. Sorry for the moving of the, the camera. I feel like I got this bright sun coming right in, and it's making me look older and grayer than I already am, which is fine. But anyway, <laughs> um, again, we'll work it all out. Um, I know it's a Bruins show, but I want to touch on something. You being a former goalie and, and us just talking about it, I was shocked that Elaine Vigneault started Carter Hart. That's not to say I thought Carter Hart lost the game for the Flyers, but I don't think it helped their cause, and I thought the Bruins took advantage of a down uh, uh, maybe tired, uh, very emotional kind of goaltender in the game. He ended up crashing his, you know, smashing his stick at the end, which I thought was very symbolic of the effort of him and his team. Um, I do think it helped the Bruins in this game, though, and they took advantage, to their credit, the Bruins said, screw that, we're taking right advantage of it. I thought Elliott would have given them a different energy. Do you agree? A thousand percent. I, I was surprised yesterday afternoon to see that they're going back with Hart. Not that he played bad on Thursday oh. night either, but he gave up f four goals in the third period. You end up losing in the shootout. We've talked about the condensed schedule. We've talked about needing your secondary goalie. Brian Elliott made 40 saves against Buffalo and, and was amazing in those 40 saves. The goals expected was like four and a yeah. half, five on Tuesday night. He was ready, primed for this start. It gives the guys different energy after a shootout loss. Gives the guys a little excitement having this guy come in and it gives Carter Hart a rest day on Saturday, a work day, a pregame skate on the road where he can get some work done with the goalie coach. So I, I was really surprised. And I thought because of that lineup and the lineup, the Bruin, the tweaks that the Bruins made, certainly Bruce Cassie and his coaching staff out coached the Philadelphia Flyers. It last was night. like they were forcing the number one status on Carter Hart in that game. We all know he's the number one. I get it. I would have started Elliott, too. The Moose is going to have to play maybe not the amount of games that Halak will play. No. But he's going to still have to play 18. Eight, yeah, at least, 18, yeah, minimum, 20. you know, I was, I was, yeah, I was going with that 20 number. Because right? okay. even, right, and yeah, we're picking, we're picking straws. But, but again, that, 
you know, you're going to need it. Just that that game was so symbol symbolic of why you need another goalie this year, because it's, it's not on a back to back. You're not traveling in between, but it's just mentally, it's a grind. It's such a grind to get up for these games with no one in the stands. And I think if you're as good a team as Philadelphia, and we're going to get done with this because again, it's a Bruins show, but it's part of the game. Um, I think you have to say, uh, you know what? It, we're as good. We're, we're that good of a team. It doesn't matter who's in net. And even though we know we have a number one, just like the Bruins know that they have a number one, we have to trust the other more than we ever have. They didn't. Vino, I think, overthought it. Is what it is. The Bruins now, to their credit, took advantage of it. Now, how did they take advantage of it? Let's just go through this game and break it down for the Morning Brew crew. Um, depth came through. The depth came through in this game. You know, we talked about it. They checked the box on Thursday's game of pushing pucks to the net. I wouldn't even call them putting them on that. They pushed them to the net with hope. In this game, first period, they put them on net with purpose. They forechecked. They cycled. They got interior position. Uh, they got, you know, they made you know, the uh, Philadelphia Flyers have to earn the puck in their own zone instead of giving it to them. Uh, obviously, they get the power play. They get a goal that makes them feel good. So important, right? But it wasn't a, it wasn't a lucky first goal. They also, I thought it was symbolic as well. I'll use that word. Marshan, Bergeron, everybody falling down. I said it looked like my squirt, my 2010 team. Everybody in a pile, you know, getting the puck, falling down. But they earned it. And I thought that that started the game off totally the right way with all lines participating that way. Every line, I'll add just one more, one-on-one battles and, and wanting it more. They, they, they wanted it more, that, that goal in the face-off dot. They wanted it more. They wanted to get to the net more than Philadelphia wanted to get to the net more. And then the same on the coil goal, that, that third, the third line. Yep. You know, yep. we're, we're getting to the point now where these guys, you know, those three lines are interchangeable last night, certainly. The, the third line, Smith goes to the net, Coyle's going to the net. They just wanted it more in front of the net than, than Philadelphia. And, and once you could see that all night, all night they were winning battles and wanting it more. And that's what we've gotten used to seeing. And it's been, it's great last night having the young guys fill those roles and the young guys understand what it's like to win puck battles. Well, let's not forget Jack Stanika started that uh, two games ago, meaning on Thursday game by going to the net. So if you mm-hmm. really want to connect the dots, you know, play that game. Studnika, a young guy, got him going 50, what, something seconds into Thursday's game in the third period by driving the net. And since he decided in that line, decided to drive the net and get that goal, stuff's been good for this team. <laughs> a few years ago, we weren't working together yet when Bruce took over, when Butchie, you know, took over. One of the first things he talked about was how the Bruins, on an offensive side of things, needed to attack the net more, like, the Bruins were doing a lot of the low to high play. They were so good at forechecking. They would go low to high. The problem is the separation between the forwards and the D, first of all, from each other, but second of all, from the forwards attacking the net. And the same thing with the D taking that. Instead of just throwing it at the net, they, he wants them to attack the net more. That was one of the first things he worked on a couple of years ago when he took over for Claude Julien. They started to get away from that these first few games. They started to have that big valley in between them the low to high play is great but not if you're taking shots from 74 feet and yeah. nobody's there it doesn't matter it, it, it's almost like he readdressed that point probably with a, a few colorful words after the second period the other night and, and it clicked and everyone got the message and, and 10 goals later in four periods all of a sudden the Bruins have their identity back and, and and they're taking, they're funneling to the net, mm-hmm. and then and then they forecheck off of that, right? They're so, they're so good at forechecking. If they funnel to the net and they're so quick on the puck that any of those rebounds, it's even easier for them to forecheck then. And then the high low opens up after that initial right. play to the net. High low is great. High low is great, but you know, again, you have to I, once you get it uh, or low high, even you know, you you you've got to have movement. You have to have movement mm-hmm. to create chaos that's what we're always trying to tell the kids it's no different at this level create chaos and they've been doing that uh the last couple of well now four periods um craig smith uh this is what we expected correct i mean this is what i expected gets his goal gets his point i mean um his goal you called him you know shooter smith uh which he is i mean that's 
he's been in the top, what, three or four every year for the last six, seven, eight years with Nashville and shots on goal, 20 plus goals. Um, he got his goal based off a shot, but it was the rebound opportunity that got it. And then his passing came through. Look, give him, you know, a couple of days, games to get acclimated. This is what I expected out of Craig Smith. I'm seeing why they wanted to get him. He, you know, I still will say this, and I still believe this, no matter what happens to this team. I'm talking if they stay healthy, Razor, their depth up front is better than it has been the last couple of years with a guy like that in the lineup. Without a doubt, and just for just to, for a free agent coming in, especially to a Boston market that that expects a lot to get a goal, it, it, even for him, just going three games and being a little nicked up, even you know after the first game, that pre- I promise you, there was a lot of pressure on him after a couple games and the five on five scoring, and it, it, he feels that you feel that after signing a three year deal, and these guys bring that home with them and, and they worry about it. So it, it didn't matter how he scored his first one, as long as he did it, you, you, you made the call that it was coming because right. he was doing the right things and, and he, he was able to tap it in last night. And that just relieves the pressure. It, it, he won't really admit it, but, but you know, he was going home and, and talking about it and thinking about it at night. Like, I really want to get this. I really want to get, so getting that out of the way. And, and that's that five on five depth that that goal is exactly what's expected from that line getting it to the net being hard to play against and the matchups they're going to get if that Krejci line's good and if the Bergeron line's good it's going to be very favorable for them they're going to have so many offensive opportunities if they play the game right just matchups so, alone uh, having a physical guy on the line uh, like the Krejci line has with Richie who Nick Richie continues to play the way that he has to play that. I mean, how about that pass through the pass seam on the power play last night? No look. Right. I got it. Wasn't yeah. It, but no, I know it, yeah. it's confidence. So here's a guy that as of now, and I, and I, I, I should stop prefacing it as of now, but I don't know. I, I guess I'm cynical. Right. I, and, and I'm not saying he, he or mm-hmm. the others won't continue to do it. I just always like to say as of now, because, season is so freaking long even a 56 gamer it's long it's a lot of games i mean and they happen so quickly after each other but as of now the last couple i mean nick ritchie this year has done his job trent frederick has done his job the most important thing i always found for players is knowing what they aren't and i think once they stop trying to be something else then they can do what they are better uh frederick is doing that ritchie is doing that uh trent frederick made that line better last night by his body position. They're all big guys. They're all big, strong yep. guys. Um, what did you like most about, let's go to Frederick here. What did, what did you like most about his game? I'm very impressed with his energy. I'm very impressed with his ability to get under the mm-hmm. opponent's skin. He, he, he caused another penalty on Friedman last night. I love the highlight. We saw him driving the net on the way in. He knocks the stick out of Friedman's hand. So annoying after the whistle. Like, what are you doing, kid? Like, why are you not? Like, they're so unnecessary. Causes face wash. Causes guys to be focused on him rather than what they're trying to do on the ice. So I, I wasn't prepared. And we've seen the PK clip. Everybody, you know, that Bruins fans have all seen that. I didn't know that was in his game as much as it is. I didn't know that he was going to be willing to take that on right away as an NHL player. So that, 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 that shows me that he, he's comfortable. He talks a lot about comfortable being in the bubble last year, I think has gone a million miles for a kid like this to be around the guys, to be accepted and to come in here. You can tell that he is much more comfortable acting like that and playing like that. Cause it's not always, it's not always easy just to do that with your teammates. You're not quite sure who's friends with guys in the league. And am I going to rub this guy the wrong way? If I go after PK Subban, is Patrice going to think that I'm trying to, you know, upstage somebody and he, he just very comfortable. So him getting under skin, causing penalties, drawing penalties on top of his puck skills have been really impressive over four games. And, and that those things he can, he can continue. You know, if the puck's not going in, if the if puck's bobbling on him, he can still get under people's skin on a consistent basis. So it's good he's found he's that niche. For his first scrap, 
He uh, th- this year. <laughs> yeah, this year. He is. I, I know he had with Tanev yep. last, but he fought a, a good amount in the American League. He under first of all, he likes it. Second of all, yeah. I think he understands that's part of his role, even though it's diminishing in the NHL. To, for him, though, they get to the NHL. He's looking for that first one. If PK had obliged him instead of saying, when I'm ready. Now, that's a veteran. When I'm ready. I get yep. it. I do. Yep. But Frederick knew that he wasn't going to go with him. He knew that. that he had to know that. Yep. PK is not going to fight Absolutely. Trent Frederick. And why would you if you're PK? No. I, 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 yep. I wouldn't. But Friedman, maybe. Here's a guy that's trying to stay in the league, too. And I didn't see much pushback at all from the Flyers, though. Very interesting. We haven't seen it the last two games, in fact. So that's not Philadelphia Flyer hockey, you know, whatever that the hell that means, quite honestly, because mm-hmm. the Bruins aren't the big bad yeah. Bruins anymore. Um, this is the way the yeah, game games, the game's just changed. Right. And... But Frederick's looking for it. Um, yeah, you, you know, you, you bring up a point I want to ask you about. You bring up a point about respecting the game. How much will veterans out there pull aside a young kid who's trying to do something with anybody and say to him, hey, don't do me a favor, back off that guy. Is that really going to happen often or not? There's not too many guys, but there's a few guys that, that maybe a young guy, not, you know, who isn't a superstar. You know, a player that's not a superstar in the league, that's been around a long time, that plays a gritty game that is on a third line, a fourth line, that maybe a young guy won't necessarily recognize has the respect of the league and will go out and maybe, you know, give him a shot at words. Or, you know, I think of a guy like, like Kevin Miller mm-hmm. or, you know, someone like, you don't, a young guy coming in cheap, doesn't cheap shot Kevin Miller. He would have respect from everybody around the league. Not a guy that is a superstar, but someone that that is tough, so you'd think, oh, I can do whatever I want to this guy. That's a good example, I guess, for me, for Bruins fans to think of that, yes, Patrice will, if Trent Frederick did something to someone like that, maybe a couple of days later, hey, that's a guy that, we, we leave that kind of guy alone. You know, he does this, this, and this. He's won a Masterson. Mm-hmm. He's come back from injury. He does so much. You ask He's him a good the right fr- way. You make sure that you do it the right way. You don't DM correct. Yeah. He deserves that guy deserves respect. And, and it's it's a simple conversation, and all young guys get it. I, I'm sure someone grabbed Brad Marshawn at some point early on, seven, eight, nine years ago, and said, "Hey, lay off that guy. That guy, you know, we we, we leave that guy alone. Yeah, it, uh, let him, tell but keep you going. Play, right? Go get this guy. But go get this right. guy. But let him also tell you. Meaning, meaning, if he's ready, you're going to know it, Brad." You're going to know it. Yes. That type of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. A um, couple of other things. Blocking shots. We did a breakdown of it in between first and second period. Uh, very important. But yet, not always just the foregone conclusion. It's the way and where you do it on the ice. So the Bruins last night did it the right way. From a former goalie perspective. You're still a goalie. I don't know why I say former goalie. But you're, you're from a goalie perspective, um, they did it the right way last night especially i thought in the first period they they closed gaps they didn't shoot uh, block shots low in the zone many of them were up high that makes life so much easier for a goalie we saw about a decade ago teams were packing it into the middle and blocking shots very low i know that pissed off some goalies if it worked it was great but at times they couldn't find pucks through i thought the bruins last night their technique and their closure of the, especially the forwards on the D or forwards on pucks in general was excellent and made a big difference. And I thought it took away the, the fly from the Flyers in the first period. The inside out, yeah. right? Yeah, inside you said out. inside out. That that inside out route, forcing Flyers to come out and take wristers from the outside. And then you can get a stick on it. Then you can throw a leg out or throw a hand out. And we, we all respect that big sliding block that the guy makes yep. on the penalty kill flying out of nowhere. But... But the reality is, if you're blocking shots like that, you're out of position. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of guys in the league. You know, Matt Sundin will always say, I never block a shot because I'm always in position. That's the mentality of these guys. You know, see, so if you see, Joachim Nordstrom was amazing at it, mm-hmm. you know, laying his body on the line. But a lot of times he's coming and, and supporting someone else because someone's not there. Last night, it's not a flashy block. It's just a little one, little because by the time they inside out the flyer defense, get them over to the wall, all they have is a wrister on net, and then you just front it. So, or you put a stick on it, and it goes up and out. So, it was it was a clinic on defensive zone blocking, defensive getting the puck up nice and high. 
the further back, the closer to the net you start blocking those shots, the more room for error there is. It, it just glances your glove, and then it's going to get on net. If you if it hits your glove as a forward mm-hmm. 60 feet from the net, it's not going to hit the net. Right. But if you're only six feet away, there's not enough room for that angle to, to dissipate. So it, that, that was a great job by the wingers, not letting it get past this, that first level of, of pressure from the Bruins up top. So the Flyers had 17 hit the net, okay? One went in. But they had 14 shot attempts that missed. Uh, I'm sorry, that were either attempted and blocked and 11 that missed. And some of those that were missed could have been because Bruins were in the way too. So they combined significantly more. You know, they had 25 attempts total that were either blocked or missed the net. Only 17 hit the net. Clinic by the Bees, the way that they did it, the way that they moved. Uh, very good clinic on the power play as well. They, they won face up. We already talked about the first goal, but in general, the few power plays they had. Moving the puck. Different options. Uh, you get different guys out there without Matt Grizzlick. You know, McAvoy was out there a bit. We saw some other. Uh, how about uh, Zaboro getting an opportunity to? Yeah. Uh, let's run through a couple of other things here. Again, morning brew is short. 20 to 25 minutes. That's it. Uh, Young D continue to look real good. Much better transitioning of the puck. Something they've been working on. Something that, that Bruce Cassidy and Kevin Dean, the guy who works the goal, uh, the uh, defense an awful lot, have been going to the practices, the ending of practices, working on short passes, turning up the ice. Thought they did a really, uh, really good job of that. Uh, I'm, I'm totally fine right now with what we've seen from the young D. I thought Cliffy, I thought Connor Clifton played well. Uh, offside, let's give him another couple of games if he has to play, uh, if he get, keeps getting in, if Grizz is out. Uh, but I was fine with with his performance. Um, I thought Carlo was more noticeable, which was good because, quite honestly, I don't need to see his offense. I love it. I want to see some, but I want to see that shutdown mentality. Hadn't seen that ton the first few games. Uh, you know, even his kind of gaps were off here and there. Much much better the last couple, and maybe that goal from the other night helped him. Remember, he was benched for seven minutes or so. He had some turnovers before that, and the Bruins, you know, staff benched him. And then he came back and found a way to succeed. It's a good response, right? Yeah. That's exactly what the coaches want to see, right. that response. So that means a lot. I mean, that, that means a lot. So that was good. Uh, give me a quick rundown on Jake DeBrusque. Happy with him the last game? You know, what did you see? M- much happier last night with his, with his ability to, to hound pucks on that top line and get the puck to those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a great play in the second period where he lifted the stick up the wall and, yeah. and then came in on that chance. He had a good chance from Marshawn across the net. He tried to go short side. Carter Hart made a pretty good save on him. So he was much more noticeable last night than I than I thought he was the rest of the games that, that we've played. It, it, it's still a, a work in progress. I, it's hard for him, I think, to to find his way on that top line. It's a, it's a bit of a different way yep. of playing yep. than what it is on the second line. So it, it takes a few more games. Hopefully by the time David comes back, he's he's got that figured out and he can he can get some offense going. I you know, for Jake as well, like we just talked about, Greg Smith, he's feeling it. He wants to score. He wants to do well. He knows where he is. He knows what expected of him as an offensive producer on this team. And when it's not coming, it, it can be frustrating. But I thought he did the right things to get there last night. It didn't go in for him last night, but he did the right things. He was moving his feet. He was impactful on the play. Yeah, it was good. Shielding, moving, yeah. a little physical, all stuff, good stuff. Um you mentioned David Pasternak expected to be in a non in a contact jersey starting practice this week. I would guess seven to ten days. I would guess you know don't screw around with that hip. It's healing, but you got to get him contact. We'll see. There's going to probably be uh, a des- not probably there's a desire to get the uh, you know top goal scorer in the, in the league back in the lineup. But you know what? Hold off for another seven, eight, nine days. Get him in. Um, could impact the position of a guy like Anders Bjork. So he got moved to the fourth line, uh, 12 and a half minutes or so, some penalty kill time. What do we think of, of Bjork in the game? I mean, he's been moved around a lot. Toggle is the word that Butch Cassidy likes to use. Toggling's fun, right? When you're playing a video game, yeah. it isn't always easy, though, when you're an NHL player trying to find a role. Yeah, it's not when you're a player and, you know, he's had come Bruce. They've, they've been very, very honest, which they are with everybody that listen, you're, you're at a crossroads yeah. now. And that's, that's not easy. It's not easy for everyone. And 
when you're in between. That's there's there's a, a thousand guys and hundreds of guys that I know that have gone through the league, have been great pros, great juniors, but just couldn't. We're always in between. Mm-hmm whether they're an in-between second and third liner, in-between third and fourth liner, in-between a first and second liner, you're just in-between. And, and if you don't figure that out soon enough, you, you end up going elsewhere. And that's, that's the reality of pro hockey. And I'm not necessarily saying Bjork's there yet, but we've heard them talk about what is he, and he needs to figure out what he is. That's, that's not coming from me. That's coming from a lot of mouths in the organization. And, and, and he's got to do that. And it looks like that that time frame is getting very short right now on him, what he is and what he's going to be. Yep. A lot of skill. And that's the reality of pro hockey. A lot of skill. That play he made last night, he flips it over the D-man, chases it down, goes in on the forecheck. Right. There, not many guys can do that in the league. He, right. he that's has a, skill. Yeah, and that's It's just a matter of pulling it off. Yeah, right. it's a, that's right. Doing it regularly. Maybe a few yeah. reps as on the fourth line will help him get comfortable he was expecting kind of start there uh let, let's let's wait and see but he could be impacted he could be the guy uh when posture not comes back but again we're 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 saying in a perfect world meaning in a healthy world you never know day to day what's yes, going to happen right. all right so uh morning brew for game two bruins win 6-1 over the flyers on saturday night this is sunday morning that means i need to get my ass to the ring <laughs> you do too as well yeah. I'm having our coffee um we will reconvene with uh morning brew three after the Pittsburgh game. So the Bruins coming up Pittsburgh on Tuesday night at TD Garden. Bruins win 6-1. to Razor, good job. Go take care of the kids. I'm going to go Got mine up. All right. Morning Brew 2. See you later.